presentation will share resources and teaching strategies for the Georgia Standards of Excellence Standard 3 NF3, which covers equivalent fractions, whole numbers as fractions, and comparing fractions in third grade. As the Achieve the Core coherence map shows, 3 NF1 and 3 NF2 are standards that prepare students for success in 3 NF3. 3 NF1 focuses on unit fractions or fractions that have a numerator of 1. Students then use these unit fractions to build fractions that have a numerator greater than 1. For example, 3 fourths is composed of 3 1 fourths. 3 NF3 also builds upon 3 NF2, which focuses on fractions on a number line. Please refer to the Georgia DOE professional video on this topic to view classroom activities that support this critical standard. A variety of conceptual tasks, as well as common misconceptions, are shown on the video. These tasks allow students to build conceptual understanding of how number lines can be partitioned into equal shares to represent fractions less than and greater than 1. The first two components of 3NF3 focus on equivalent fractions. Students should only explore equivalent fractions using models rather than algorithms or procedures. Students will understand that two fractions are equivalent if they are the same size or at the same point on a number line. They will also generate equivalent fractions with denominators of 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. This task, Retrieve from LearnZillion, encourages students to explore equivalent fractions by analyzing the results of a frog jumping contest. This task builds upon knowledge of unit fractions and how to represent them in various ways. Students were encouraged to use area models and number lines to justify their thinking. Frogs jump the same distance. Frog B and C jump the same. It equal, one fourth is equal to two eighths. How are you comparing the frog jumps? With a number line that we can see what's equivalent to each frog. Like okay. B, frog B and frog C. And I can see that frog B for one fourth is equivalent to two eighths for frog C. In addition to area models, students should use number lines to locate equivalent fractions. A common misconception with using number lines to find equivalent fractions is that students often count the spaces or increments instead of finding fractions that are the same distance from zero or at the same point on the number line. When using double number lines, students are able to represent two fractions as equivalent. They also build understanding that fractions can be generated by adding or removing partitioning lines. By hanging double number lines on the wall, students can easily determine the number of increments in each hole and manipulate the pieces to create equal size units. They can then place the fractions at the correct location while having the ability to correct and modify their thinking as they go. Do you see any fractions that are equivalent from on the top line to the bottom line? Yes. Which ones? Four, eight, and three, six. How do you know that they're equivalent? Because they're at the same point on different number lines. The next component of 3 and of 3 continues to focus on equivalent fractions, but emphasizes whole numbers as fractions. This number line model encourages students to determine the unit fractions in each whole. This number line is divided into thirds. Each whole consists of three thirds. When using number lines that represent more than one whole, students often count all of the units on the entire number line instead of only counting the units in each whole. In this example, the student mistakenly named 8 tenths as 8 twentieths. Each whole is divided into 10 tenths. By recognizing that fractions equivalent to 1 have the same numerator and denominator, Students can use that knowledge to determine and sort fractions less than, equal to, and greater than 1. So where would this fraction go? Is it less than 1, equal to 1, or greater than 1? It's greater than 1. How do you know? Because 2 is bigger than 1. Okay, the numerator is bigger than yeah. the denominator. What number does that represent? Two holes. Two holes, okay. What's the next fraction? This one. And what would that be? Less than 1, greater than 1, or equal to 1? equal to 1. How do you know? Because um, the numerator and the denominator are the same. Okay. 
And where would these others go? Less than one. Because? Because the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Students should use a variety of models to build whole numbers. The hexagon race game was adapted from a task in Unit 5 in the Georgia Frameworks. While students play the game, they use pattern blocks as they race against a partner to create whole hexagons. The students are able to explore equivalent fractions as they trade sixths, thirds, and halves in a variety of combinations to create one whole. Two halves, three thirds, and six sixths are all equivalent to one. See any fractions that are equivalent on your game? Three sixths is equivalent to one half. Yes. Do you see any fractions that are equivalent on yours? Two halves is equivalent to one whole. An extension to the hexagon game can be found at LearnZillion. In this task, students will explore the number of pattern blocks that are required to make three holes or complete hexagons. As they build the hexagons, they discover that 18 sixths, six halves, and nine thirds all equal three. Fraction tiles used with number line models are another great tool for developing a conceptual understanding of building fractions equivalent to and greater than one. As students place the tiles by the number line, they create a visual that shows that the unit fraction is repeated and does not change. This hands-on activity builds conceptual understanding that is needed before students move on to more abstract models. When working with fractions, students need ample opportunities with area and length models. By representing fractions with number lines, fraction tiles, and fraction towers, students are able to better conceptualize that fractions are a number that represent a specific quantity. Length models allow students to create and compare fractions of various sizes without limiting their thinking to part-whole relationships. The last component of 3NF3 focuses on comparing fractions. The comparison situations are limited to fractions that have the same numerator or fractions that have the same denominator, with an emphasis on only comparing fractions that have the same size whole. Students will record the results of their comparisons using the appropriate symbols while justifying their thinking with fraction models. Students will reason about the size of the pieces as they compare like numerators and like denominators. In addition to using pre-made fraction models, it is very beneficial for students to create their own models to deepen their conceptual understanding of the size of each unit fraction. To make fraction fringe, simply give students four pieces of different colored paper. The students will stagger the paper so that each color shows. Fold the paper in half and then cut along the crease. Once the top is stapled together on each piece, the students will label the bottom layer as one whole. This layer will not be cut. The student will cut the remaining pieces on one of the models by cutting them all in half. Each piece of the fringe in the top two layers will then be cut in half again to make fourths. Finally, each piece in the top layer will be cut in half again to make eighths. These steps are repeated with the emphasis being on thirds, sixths, and twelfths on the other model. The fraction fringe models can be used throughout the unit as an easily accessible resource and hands-on tool. As students explore comparing fractions with a variety of concrete models, they deepen their understanding of fractions as numbers. Once students grasp the size of each unit fraction, they can then compare fractions without models. The Status Fraction Game by Greg Tang provides opportunities for students to compare fractions with equal numerators and denominators. Once selecting the activity, students can then strive to compare the biggest and smallest fractions in the least amount of time without making any errors. As students find equivalent fractions and compare fractions, it is extremely important that we nix the tricks that encourage students to simply get an answer without understanding the meaning behind the comparison. The butterfly method does not provide conceptual understanding and reinforces a misunderstanding that comparing fractions involves tricks and procedures to follow instead of encouraging students to think about the quantity that each fraction represents. 
In the Georgia Frameworks, there are several tasks to promote conceptual understanding of building and comparing fractions. This pizza task was adapted from Unit 5. Each student selected the number of pieces that their pizza would be partitioned into. Although the size of the pizza was the same, the number of pieces on each pizza varied from student to student. After students added the ingredients to their pizzas, they were able to compare their pizzas to others that contained the same number of pieces as well as to students who had fewer or more pieces. This task, Retrieve from LearnZillion, encourages students to analyze the size of the crops that each farmer grows. Farmer Gus put out a sign that stated that he had the largest selection of corn in town. Students grappled to determine if his sign is true and then made their own signs to advertise various crops. Come to Bob's farm if you like corn. We have the most in town. How do you know that Bob has the most corn? Because I look at my cards that I wrote down and they all have the same denominator, so I look at the numerators, and so I see three, two, and four, and four is greater than two and three. If you like strawberries, come to Gus's farm. We have the most strawberries in town. How do you know Gus has the most strawberries? Because Bob has a one six, and Gus has three six, and Jane has two six. So why did you put a one-half right here with a three-six? Because three-six is the same as one-half. The trash can basketball task can also be found in the Georgia Frameworks. In this engaging game, students race against a partner to see who can throw the most pieces of trash into the can. The students then analyze and compare their fractional results to see who the winner is. Not only can students compare how many pieces of trash made it into the basket, they can analyze the portion that is left over. What fraction did not make it into the basket? Now, what fraction of the baskets did you make? Seven tenths. Seven tenths. What fraction did you not make if you had ten baskets? Three tenths. Three tenths. How many baskets did y'all throw? Ten. How many did you make? I, I made two tenths. And how many did you make? Six. How do you know that six tenths is greater than two tenths? Because um, the the denominator are the same, so we go to. So we the looked at the numerator, the numerator and, and then, then this, this one was one less than that. This last task was also retrieved from LearnZillion. In this rigorous task, students are able to compare fractions less than and greater than one while helping customers choose the right pizza. In the following videos, you will see how students use number lines and area models to compare the amount of each specific ingredient. The model allows the students to justify their conclusions as they record their results. So if Beth wants some pepperoni but less than one half a cup, what pizza should she order? Beth wants Chicago melt. How do you know which that the Chicago melt would be best for her? because I drew number lines in thirds and five thirds is greater than one whole. Okay, and so that wouldn't be less than a half a cup. What about the Delaware pizza? Zero thirds doesn't have any. Yes, so that wouldn't be some pepperoni. Okay, and what about the Chicago melt? Chicago melt is one third, so she doesn't want the Chicago melt. Yes, because one third is less than one half. So if Alexis wants a pizza that has more than one cup of mushrooms, what pizza would she buy? She'll want the Delaware Delight. How do you know that she would want the Delaware Delight? Because this one has zero six mushrooms and this one only has one six. One six? Uh -huh. yeah. So how much does the Delaware Delight have? Seven six. And how do you know that seven six is greater than one? Because a numerator is bigger than a de denominator. Denominator. So if Kelly wants more than one and a half cups of cheese, what pizza will she order? She will order spicy Dakota. How do you know that she would want the spicy Dakota? Spicy Dakota is seven fours, and Delaware Delight is six fours, and Chicago Melt is four fours. So seven fours is greater than one and a half. 
In addition to concrete fraction models, there are a variety of websites that offer virtual fraction manipulatives. The comparison tool in Conceptual Math allows for the opportunity for a problem to be written at the top of the screen. Students can then type in the fractions and then lock the screen and represent those models in a variety of ways. Once the student has determined the model that they would like to use, they can then drop and drag to the appropriate space and select the appropriate symbol.